Melbourne Victory players hope the failings of video refereeing technology in Saturday night's A-League Grand Final don't tarnish the team's win. It comes after Football Federation Australia revealed that Melbourne's winning goal against the Newcastle Jets would have been ruled offside if not for a technical problem with the system. Keith Lyons is an adjunct professor of sports studies at the University of Canberra and says it's not the first time that questions have been raised about video refereeing. He joins me now from Canberra. Keith Lyons, welcome. So what did you make of this mess on Saturday night? Um, it, inevitable in part that uh, whenever we have technology in sport, there are always issues about the technology as well as the interpretation. Yeah. Explain for us what happened as you understand it. My understanding is that the video assistant referee system went offline for 30 seconds and so the uh, video assistant referee was unable to make a decision based upon uh, the video being available to him at that time. Yeah. Wait, like, how does that happen when that's the whole, the whole point of the system? Um, it, it's happened on number of occasions around the world. Uh, the systems require so much redundancy to avoid this exact problem that often they become more expensive in doing so. So I think there are dilemmas about having real-time technology to make decisions. Yeah. So how much has this technology been embraced by the football establishment around the world? Well, in 2016, FIFA uh, agreed to provide video assistant referees and it will be used at the 2018 World Cup. It's been used in America, in Spain, in Italy, um, and uh, in Germany in particular. So th there are lots of examples of it being used. So how do you get around these glitches? Because, I mean, they're, they're pretty important glitches. Well, the dilemma is that the technologies provide a lapse time or after the event review of a real-time event. The, on, at the victory game at the weekend, the assistant referee was near to two of the players that would have been adjudged offside by the VAR system. So there's some interesting dilemmas between people being present and the technology itself. Yeah, and, but uh, they could have resorted to just watching the TV replays, could, couldn't they? Because everyone could see on the TV coverage that they were clearly offside. Uh, the dilemma is, because of the ruling for offside, only one row of seats on the far side of the ground and one side on the near side would have had that straight-in-line view. Everybody else is having a displaced view. Right. And, and some of the research tells us that it's very hard to coincide the, the playing of the ball and the movement of the player. So do you think the football establishment around the world should stick with this and try to improve it or just drop it and go back to um, relying on the refs on the pitch? Well, I think they have to start, stop talking about this being a system that removes uh, error. There will always be error and they have to accept that there will be errors in application as well as in the technology itself. If they want to provide some kind of reassurance to people that things are not being adjudged inappropriately. Uh, so in terms of justice do you think the game should be replayed or not? Uh, the, I think the laws are quite clear. It can't be replayed, but there was an interesting example recently in Germany where in the Mainz-Freiburg game, a penalty decision that was appealed as the referee blew for half-time and did not award the penalty, they awarded the penalty uh, during the half-time break and the players came out and the penalty was taken again. <laughs> right, so there's still plenty to be worked out with this system. Uh, and my point would be that, that Melbourne victory scored in the first nine minutes of the game and there were still 81 minutes left. So how we balance decisions and actual technical and tactical play is an important part of the debate. Yeah, and plenty of debate still to come. OK, Keith Lyons, thanks so much for talking to us this morning from Canberra. Thank you.